tuned into Quick Charge, the high voltage podcast bringing you the top stories in electric vehicles and sustainable energy daily. And it's all powered by electric. Welcome back to today's episode of Quick Charge. It's July 1st, 2024. I'm your host, Joe Boris. Starting off today with some Tesla RoboTaxi news. Tesla patents an automatic sanitation system for its upcoming robo-taxis. Now, this makes a ton of sense because what we learned from COVID was that people are dirty and gross and disgusting, and we don't want to be sitting in the same spaces and touching the same surfaces that other humans have been in minutes before us, hours before us, before us at all, right? We want to think that what we're getting into is a nice, neat, clean vehicle. And this patent kind of addresses that. It talks about the advantages presented by shared spaces and shared vehicles. It does so without quite saying explicitly that public transit, subways, buses, things like that are going to be more sustainable and economical and ultimately something that should be pursued and not something crazy like a hyperloop with a bunch of privately owned cars going through them very, very slowly. But regardless of that, this makes perfect sense. In order for a robo-taxi to be truly successful in a post-COVID world, I think it definitely needs some kind of sanitation program, sanitation procedure. In the patent, Tesla explains that it's going to use a variety of sensors, which might include image sensors, acoustic sensors, thermal sensors, pressure sensors, capacitive sensors, and even radio frequency sensors to keep track of the environment inside the vehicle. As for the actual sanitation routine, Tesla mentions the potential use of UV lights and a heating system to carry out the sanitization. Fred points out in the article, you should definitely go read the whole thing, that it is not specifically said what that process will be. And it's even suggested at one point that RoboTaxi may go back to some kind of cleaning depot and be washed by robots. So maybe that's what Optimus is for. He's there to run the uh, virtual robot car wash. We'll see about that. In other Tesla news, specifically Tesla Semi news, a Tesla Semi was recently spotted by a Reddit user sporting a sensor array at the top of the vehicle. So instead of that fairing cap at the top of the Semi, it's got this sensor array. Now, it does look like a LiDAR sensor array. It's worth noting here that Tesla does not use LiDAR sensors for its autonomous driving cars but it has used LIDARs in terms of proving out that its systems work. This is a really controversial take here because Tesla hasn't spent a lot of time talking about what kind of ADAS systems or autonomous driving systems it was going to be putting into its semi since it first showed it off back in 2017. In the meantime, we have seen other companies like Daimler Truck with its eCascadia promise level four autonomous driving, We've seen a number of other third-party companies attaching autonomous driving solutions up again, level two, three, and four. Einride very famously is building trucks that don't even have driver cabs. So this is something that's out there, but these other companies are very clear that they are using LIDAR. They are using radar where Tesla and Elon Musk in particular have said multiple times that they believe that cameras are the way forward. So it'll be interesting to see what features eventually do roll out with that Tesla semi when it does come to market. But for now, we are driving purely on speculation here. We think that the LiDAR system is going to be there to validate the camera-based system. And we'll see what we see when those finally come to market and become more widely available. While some fleet operators might still be waiting for their Tesla semis, others are moving on to different products. McDonald's, for example, just put 10 Volvo VNR electric class eight semi trucks to work in their Canadian fleet. Now, this was done through their logistics partner, Martin Brower. They ran a pilot program last year with a single Volvo VNR Electric. The numbers were so good there that they've decided to put 10 more in place. And they are now talking about rolling out an even larger program, not only in Canada, but throughout the U.S. and North America as well. So these pilot programs are working. This is obviously a second generation electric semi-truck product. The VNL Electric is scheduled to be debuted later this year, which would be Volvo's third generation electric semi-truck. And they're not alone. Walmart has also become the first major retailer in North America to deploy a hydrogen semi-truck. In this case, this is a Nikola Trey hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. So Walmart is another example of a potentially large, highly visible customer who has 
for years now talked about the Tesla semi orders that it's had on the books waiting to be filled. It does seem that they are moving on or at least sampling other vehicles as well to see what's going to fit their need. Now, it's worth noting that there's a lot of companies who initially placed those Tesla semi orders who are still waiting and they are now opting into other things, whether it's the Freightliner e Cascadia, the new uh, Hino Turn that's backed by Toyota. There's a ton of these class eight and lower class five, class six commercial vehicles that are coming on the road in the next couple of years. And they are reaching production. People are putting real miles on them and seeing how they work into their fleet. And that first mover advantage that Tesla might've had in 2017 or 2018 is long gone by now. So they're gonna be coming into a much more established market. And I'm really curious to hear what you think Tesla's chances of success with the new semi, especially in context of this broadening and growing electric truck market might be in the comments. And we'll look forward to reading those. Moving on to some other electric car competition from China, NIO is shattering its records in June, delivering over 20,000 EVs for the second straight month in a row. Now, after its second straight month with over 20,000 deliveries, NIO has broken both its monthly and quarterly delivery records. NIO's EV deliveries reached 57,373 in the second quarter of 2024. That's up 143% compared to Q2 of 23. It's also enough to beat the previous record of 55,532 deliveries in Q3 of 2023. NEO expected between 54,000 and 56,000 deliveries in Q2, so it's ahead of its guidance. Again, this is like 10% of the numbers that Tesla is doing, but it's still significant. They're a brand that's moving into new markets. They're pioneering that battery swap technology and seem to have figured out a way to make that viable, having swapped millions of batteries throughout China and Northern Europe. So it'll be interesting to see how long they can sustain this kind of growth, where that will eventually drive their stock price, which despite breaking delivery records is still down like 47% from its all-time high. And it'll be interesting to see how other companies, especially companies that are struggling or companies that are down in sales 15, 20% compared to last year, how they respond to this, or if there is even a way to respond to this, specifically looking at BYD, Ford, Volkswagen, and how all of those other companies that are directly competing with these NEOs figure out ways to, uh, to approach these numbers and see how they can continue to grow. And finally, in some offbeat energy news, EV battery maker SK On is going to buy 100,000 metric tons of Arkansas lithium from none other than ExxonMobil. That's right. Oil company ExxonMobil is drilling its first lithium well in southern Arkansas after acquiring the rights to 120,000 gross acres of the Smackover Formation, one of North America's most plentiful lithium sources. The Arkansas project will extract lithium from underground saltwater deposits and convert it into battery grade materials on site. Exxon asserts that this method will produce lithium more efficiently and with fewer environmental impacts than traditional hard rock mining. Now, I want to point out here that I am not an expert in lithium mining. I am not an expert in any sort of mining. However, comma, I have interviewed a number of people in the mining industry, specifically back in uh, specifically in 2022 and 2023, when we were doing a lot of work with uh, Snow Lake Lithium. That was a project up in Canada. And the explanation that I always got from them, obviously that was a hard rock mining operation, was that there was a much smaller environmental impact with hard rock mining, especially when it came to lithium, because there was not enough evidence yet to show that this kind of you know, wet field lithium mining and that uses a lot of evaporation was able to keep other chemicals, harmful chemicals out of the water table. Now, Exxon says this is the way to go. I don't have any objective reason to debate that, except for the fact that I just personally don't believe anything any of these oil companies say. So if Exxon says that this is more effective and has fewer environmental impacts, I think we should put a big old asterisk next to that simply because it's Exxon who's saying it. And yes, I understand that's a logical fallacy. The source of information does not determine whether or not that information is true. But uh, hey, that's where I feel. Now, if you feel differently, we obviously want to hear about it. Be sure to go down into the comments section and let us know. And if you don't feel differently, give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.